Holes of the Paranormal Real Ghost Stories The Unsuspected Passenger In the 1990s, Julia, a resident of Portland, Oregon, was driving out of the city to meet with friends when she found herself in traffic. The 18-year-old soon discovered that the cause of the slowdown was due to a dreadful car crash, and to her horror, as she passed the scene, she realised that someone had died. A moment later, there was a woman sitting in my passenger seat, Julia told, said. For those who admit it sounds crazy, Julia said she could see a woman dressed in work clothes and seated next to her. Though she was completely shocked, the woman in the passenger seat was even more freaked out. She looked like someone who suddenly ended up in someone else's car, Julia said. Panicked, the woman demanded to know how she got there, who Julia was. It was then Julia noticed a woman had an earthly quality about her, and she realised whoever she passed on the side of the road was somehow in the car with her. Madam, you need to calm down. My name is Julia. I'm here to help. She told the stranger. Julia later went on to explain to the woman she had been in a car accident and somehow ended up in a passenger seat. The woman was stricken. That exact minute, I passed a clearing in the trees with some encouragement from Julia. Julie, the woman peacefully walked towards the sun. In complete disbelief, Julie passed. Oh, pulled over and convinced herself she imagined the whole thing. Several days later, however, the story came on the news about a trucker injured in a car accident. Before they finished, they threw out a picture of the woman that was in my car. It explained she had passed away in the accident. It was unbelievable. It was too much, said Julie. The Ghost of Stanley Hotel Opened in 1909, the Stanley Hotel in Eskis Park, Colorado, was originally a pop, a getaway for Kess seeking solitude in the mountains. Years passed by, the occupancy declined. By the nineteen seventies, Grand Hotel had fallen to disrepair. It was then this time that Stephen King spent the night there, and a famous room two hundred one seven aspired to write The Shining. Aware of his ghostly rumours, Texas resident Harry Henry Yu booked a last-minute getaway in April of 2016 to check it out. After arriving, he had dinner, then wandered around the Stanley to take photos, shopping at the staircase. Stopping at the staircase, he wanted, waited for people to clear the area and took a picture, thinking nothing of it. Later in the night, however, he fell seriously ill. I felt sick. I had shivers. I was like something really wrong. His companion suggested they go to the emergency room, but he refused. On trip home, going swiping for the photos he'd taken, we discovered he said what he said was really, really some strange image of someone standing on the stairs. Said no one had been there. The next day he posted a photo on Instagram, half joking. He captured a ghost and the world took notice. Almost overnight, he found himself in limelight, a ghost picture warranting attention from global media outlets and paranormal experts who wanted to examine the photo. Some experts say that it's two ghosts, and other people said it's, that it's the reason I got sick because the ghost was trying to materialize, get, taking energy out of me. Hauntings at Liz the Bolan House. On August 4th, 1892, Andrew White, a wife, Abby Bowden, a ma- found murdered, murdered in a f- Fall River, Massachusetts at home. Though the murder was uncommon in the late 1800s, the fact that he was bludgeoned to death with an axe, the main suspect was a 32 year old daughter, Liz Bowden, certainly was. <coughs> One of the reports is from a tour guide, Susanna St. John. When I started working, it was more of a history. This year, I didn't care about the paranormal. 
that, cha that changed after St. John experienced a few unusual happenings of her own. Guests tell us they hear things, they're laughing and playing in the middle of the night. Things get moved around. She said, explaining that she once found toys scattered around the room that no one had been in. There was a picture in the foot that fell over and slid two feet across the floor without any plausible explanation, plus a closet door that opened its own violation. So John said that on the eve of her anniversary, Andrew Abbey's murder, she and two other guy, two other guys felt sudden sharp piercing pains in the left eye. Same location of Andrew Bowen's fatal in injuries. The Grandma's in the Cemetery Jeff, a resident of Dalton, Ohio, was driving in his old son, Miles, in the back seat. He had put past the cemetery, his modern cemetery, with only flowers and small plaques. As they passed by, they were suddenly singing, abruptly stopped, pointed to the cemetery and exclaimed, Look at all those people. Jeff turned and looked. They didn't see a single person there. Confusing asked Miles, What are you talking about? All those people over there, his son said. They're sure, a lot of them. Grandmas, Gordon and Jeff, chills ran down his spine. He asked his son what all the people were doing. They're standing there, looking down the grass, his son said. Completely settled by the conversation, he sped up by, drove home. Later the same day, Miles was watching his favourite cartoon on TV. He looked up at Jeff and said, you know they weren't alive. Thinking Miles meant the cartoon, Jeff said, Oswald what Miles went. Those people saw, like, we saw they all paused. The Ghosts of Stone's Public House. Janet Minorosi had been a resident of Asheron most of her life, and now was a bartender, manager in the inn. It was built by John Stone in 1832. According to Miss Early, father and young son went outside to watch the trains go by, attending a private event at a restaurant. When they came back inside, she overheard the father reassuring his son there wasn't anyone else outside, beside the fact the son claims he's seen a little girl sitting beside him. He sees like, she's sitting right next to me. She was crying. You didn't see the little girl. And Dad said, there's nobody there. That's just me and you, buddy. Rosaroni claim recalls. Other ghosts are said to haunt the old inn, including the John Stone himself. Well, who Morosi said didn't die there, but bleed to be watching over the place. One night Morosi was closing the inn by herself. She heard footsteps walking directly above her on the second floor. It was just like there's no explanation for whatsoever that whatsoever I'm leaving. The singing church ghost. Alice Tarusi, tour guide, owner of Salem Kids Tours. First, about haunts of the first church in Salem. Little ones, maybe four or five, were asked about a ghostly presence. They set up a choir loft. See, out in the choir loft in the main sanctuary of our church. They always point to the same spot with us. Well, they're looking at children describe a woman in dark, old-fashioned dress. The kids will say she's she's a long dress, long sleeves that sometimes can be heard singing with the choir. The church outside itself was built in 1836. It tells about ghost sightings that have been circulating since the 1960s. The go prison ghosts have followed her home. This is from Teresa Ingy, author and paranormal investigator known as the Haunted Housewife. According to Ingy, several suicides, murders and riots took place there and eventually it was shattered, shattered in 1990. You can imagine why a place like this could be, would be haunted. There's something negative there. You can feel it in, the, in your bones. We ran into female spirits there when I thought was incredibly interesting. 
One said it was the wife of a former warden who was shot with a gun, sitting atop a box he was pulling down from a closet shelf. They captured recordings of a woman crying. The warden, most likely, they even smelled rose perfume in the bedroom. Another spirit is said to haunt the reformery, a woman who sits in the prison chapel and cries when he approaches this woman, sitting in pews she disappears. Other women have seen her walking. The Ghosts of Wilbury, Wilbury Cole. This comes from the paranormal investigator, Teresa and Angie. Uh, and this per, from Harry, Henry Winters. One morning, Norris allegedly told his wife, He's going out for bread to check out repairs, having done on the Wilbury building. He never returned. So a later, later, his body was discovered from the door. He was lying in a bloody heap. After the investigation, it was determined that Norris was death was an accident. And he said his ruling was didn't sit well with the family. They thought that when Norris, then Norris arrived at property in the moment that morning, he was greeted by someone, several someone's who jumped him, dragged him to the third floor, and pitched him through the window. His spirit is said to still haunt the building, the ghost of Captain Joseph White. This is coming from Genova Vini Asoro, owner and tour guide at Solem Historical Tours. Tours take photos of the house, and despite being empty, many pictures reveal shadowy figures in the window on landing on the Golda Pendry house. It definitely seem absolutely active. And this is due to the 82-year-old allegedly targeted by greedy brothers hoping to get their hands on his will. Brothers Joseph and Francis Kippy kept and this is to help Richard Cronersfield to help get his job done. Late in the evening, when Captain White is asleep, Dick, Don, Dick Cronersfield comes in, he goes upstairs, and says, Floor takes a club and bashes the captain over the head, crushes his skull. The murder results in Scanner's trial and said to be an inspiration for the Andrew Allen Poe tale, the Telltale Heart, as well as Game Clue. The no ghostly nanny. Kip, a caller from West New York State, said the story of his wife who posted a beautiful old home while they were dating. After visiting the, buying the house, his wife invited her sister, a newborn baby, to visit, pay, come for a visit. They stayed in the downstairs bedroom, and my wife was sleeping in the upstairs bedroom. She said that first night they came, she could hear her sister saying something out loud in the middle of the night. Next morning, Kip's wife asked who we'd been talking to. Her sister replied, I woke up in the middle of the night. There's an old lady standing over my baby. I had to go tell her to go away. But that was just the beginning. Lance was seriously moved, and once while I was outside, working in the garden, Kip's wife heard a smoke alarm go off in the house. She immediately runs back in the house, because that. There is a smoke alarm in the same downstairs bedroom going off. So when she opened the door, she said for a split she said for a split second all she could see in the room was this white fog. Within moments, however, the white fog disappeared and the alarm shut off. Convinced the house was haunted, Kim's wife reached out for labour to learn about the property. She learned the previous owner had been a nut year old woman who tragically died in the fire fire. And that is the end of that.